Okay, so let's exit isolation mode and let's give this guy a name. I'm just going to call it Iron Sight. Alright, and we can center the pivot. Hard tap, effect pivot only, center object, turn off. Alright, just going to chuck the gray on here. Alright, hit Z. Alright, let's just take a look and make sure everything's going to be okay. Alright, it doesn't look too bad. Again, it's not exact to the reference, but uh, it's close enough, I think. And if you want to take a little more time, you know, you could add a little, you know, a few more details if you wanted to. Alright, so we're almost done, finally. Uh, we just got to add the little pin here, and then there's one little piece that goes on the side, and then we'll be done with this thing. Okay, so for the pin, we can probably just maybe grab one from the other site. So let's right-click and unhide all. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in here on this one. I'm just going to steal this little pin piece there and just copy it over. All right, so shift and drag on the Y. Okay, I'm just going to call this iron sight pin. All right, copy and OK. All right, we'll just drag it over to where it needs to be. Let's do this in the left view. All right, just down to our hole. All right, try to center it. Okay, let's scale it up on the triangle so it fits our hole. Okay, and let's go into the uh, front view. Just so we can see a bit better here. Okay, so I'm just going to move it over. It looks like it's going to have to be a little longer. Okay, so going to wireframe, I'm just going to go into the modify panel and drop down into edit poly. And we'll go to vertex. Okay, I'm just going to grab the verts on each end and just pull them out slightly. Okay, like that, and we'll uh, turn off vertex and just take smooth back on. Alright, and let's go back to perspective, hit Z, just make sure everything's lining up okay. Alright, I didn't bother cutting the hole through the inside of the site for that, because um, I don't think you really need to. Alright, so that's good. Okay, so we're, we're nearly done here. Just got one last little piece to add. Okay, so let's do another save. Okay, so let's check out our reference. Uh, we don't need this guy anymore, so I'm just going to close that. And we can't see the piece we need to on this one because it's on the other side, so I'm just going to close this one as well. And we'll go back into the uh, Utilities tab into the Asset Browser. I'm just going to see if I can find a picture of that piece. Uh, maybe here. All right, you can see it there. Uh, it's really simple. It's just a little bar. Um, let's see if I have another angle of it. Right, you can kind of see it there. Right, we can make this pretty uh, simple. We'll just do it out of a spline. Okay, let's check this one. Yeah, right there. Okay. So I don't even really think we need the reference for it because it's very simple. Okay, so let's just select the very uh, front band. Go into isolation mode, Alt Q. Okay, and we'll just go into the front view again. All right, zoom in here. Okay, so we'll just use the spline for this. Let's go back to the uh, create panels of shapes, and I'm just going to choose line. Okay, I'm just going to start, I guess, read maybe about here. Alright, might even be able to actually use a rectangle for this. It's probably going to be easier to do that. Okay, so let's just drag one out. Okay, and let's make sure it's centered to the band. So I'm just going to align it with the align tool. Click on the band. XYZ, both pivot points, and OK. Alright, I'll just move it over. Okay, like that, and let's uh, convert it to an editable uh, spline. Okay, we can go to wireframe here so it's easier. And let's go to segment, and just grab that segment there and delete it. We don't need it. Okay. And I'm going to leave these two verts just on the inside of the band, so you won't see the end. Okay. And let's grab these two over here, and we'll just round this out with fillet. Okay, just click and drag up a bit, round it out. Okay, like that maybe. And let's turn that off. Alright, then I'm going to go up to the top here and just open up the rendering rollout and just tick on Enable and Renderer and Enable and Viewport. Okay, so we can see it uh, with some thickness. Okay. Let's take another 
look here. All right, it's it's fairly thin. Okay, so uh, that might be okay actually. Just take another look. All right, so I'm just gonna put the sides up a little bit to make sure it's kind of smooth. All right, we'll do maybe 16. Okay, you could tick on adaptive here if you want under inhalation, and it'll really smooth it out. But it adds a lot of uh, extra segments on the corners. Okay, so we probably don't need to do that for this. Let's just turn that off. And I'm just going to up the uh, steps a bit. All right, just to smooth the corners out a little bit more. All right, we'll do 20 or so on the steps. Okay. So just like that. And let's uh, turn off vertex. All right, and just move this over so it's centered. With this center line here. Okay, just like that. All right, and let's uh, exit isolation mode. All right, just want to make sure it's not sticking out too far. Just gonna hit Z. All right, that's probably okay, I think. All right, so let's uh, grab this guy. All right, we can convert it to edible poly. Okay, and I'm just gonna go to polygon and go into wireframe F3. All right, just grab these ends on the inside. All right, and just deselect these guys holding alt, so the caps are just selected, and delete them. With delete, because we don't need them. All right, and let's change the color. All right, throw a gray on there. All right, I'm just going to uh, select the band and copy the name. Control C, select this guy, paste the name. And I'll just add bar or something to the end so we know what it is. Okay, just like that. Okay, so let's just hit Z and take a look. Alright, looks uh, pretty good, I think. All right, I know it took absolutely forever, but the uh, launcher is now done. Okay, and we're still going to have to do the uh, rocket down here, but that's not going to be... Uh, nearly as bad as doing this. It's not nearly as many pieces. Alright, so now that we got the, the launcher finally finished after all this time, let's do a save. Okay, so before we actually start building the rocket, uh, I'm just going to check the poly count on the launcher. Alright, I think it's going to be pretty insanely high, but let's just see. Okay, so we'll right click up here in the corner on perspective and go down to configure. Okay, and in the viewport configuration, I'm just going to open up the uh, stats tab. Alright, and just turn on polygon count and untick this other stuff. Alright, and we'll leave it on total and hit OK. And we'll right click up here again and just go down to uh, show stats. Alright, so you can see it's almost half a million polys. 485,000. Alright, that's a ton. That's uh, pretty high poly. I mean, it's okay in our case because, you know, this is a really high res model anyway. And I wasn't, you know, really concerned with having a high poly count when we started. Uh, but just to note before we move on, um, just going to hide the uh, heat shield and the barrel for a sec. All right, hide selection. All right, we deleted the inside of these pieces here. All right, as you can see, there's no inside. All right, but I didn't do that on the rest of the bands. All right, these still have the inner pulleys, and so do these guys at the back. Okay, so if you wanted to take a few minutes, you could actually go in here and just work your way along band by band and just delete all the stuff on the inside that you can't see. All right, and because you're never going to see it, you know, it's kind of a waste to have it in here. Alright, so you could do that if you wanted to. It'll take the countdown somewhat, but it's still going to be pretty uh, high. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd mention it um, before we moved on. Okay, so for the sake of speed, I'm just going to leave it for now and I'll move on. Alright, we'll start doing the rocket, but that might be a good idea. Alright, so let's go to the left view. And we'll zoom out here so we can see it. Okay, so we'll build this in a couple pieces, I think. Alright, so we have the motor here, I think we'll do that out of, out of uh, one piece, and then we got the warhead and the fins, so I think I'll break that probably into a couple pieces, and then we just have the shaft with the stabilizer fins here and the offset fins at the back. So it's not that many pieces, it shouldn't take us uh, too long to do, but I think I'll start right in the center here of the motor, and we'll get that out of the way first, okay? So I'm just going to check the reference here and see if we can actually see what this looks like on here. Alright, you can kind of see the fins here, so I might leave that one open. Let's check this one. Alright, that's not going to be a lot of help, so let's just get rid of that one. And we don't really need this one either. Okay, and I'm just going to go back into the asset browser and see if I have uh, some better angles of this uh, rocket. Alright, this one's pretty good. You can see it. So we'll use that. And let's try this one. Alright, you can see the end here. We're going to need to be able to uh, see that, so we'll keep that one open. 
right, so I'll just use those. Let's see what this one looks like. Okay, and this one's quite a bit different than the other ones. All right, I don't really like the look of this uh, as much, so I think we'll uh, just base ours on the other reference, and we'll just keep this open in case we need it. All right, so let's go uh, to the create panel, and I think we'll start with cylinder. So I'm going to jump into the uh, front view for this. Okay, and we'll just grab a cylinder and drag one out. It doesn't matter what size it is. Uh, we'll tweak it in a minute, just give it some height. Okay, and I'm just going to align it to the uh, the heat shield All right, first. So let's go to the align tool, just click on the heat shield. All right, X, Y, Z, both pivot points, and OK. And then we'll move it back down to where it needs to be. Okay, so let's go into the uh, left view one more time. All right, and we'll just move it up here. Okay, and be before we uh, change the size, let's just change the color. All right, I'm just going to throw the blue on. Okay, and let's go into the modify panel here, and we'll just tweak the radius a bit. All right, let's do maybe 12. All right, that's pretty close. Okay, and the height doesn't matter. We'll do it manually. We only need one height segment, and uh, I think we'll probably want to turbo smooth this piece. Uh, let's just take a look. I right, can't see it there. All right, this is pretty smooth. The uh, body of this. All right, and these are pretty rounded over, so. Um, yeah, I think we'll turbo smooth it. Okay, so we don't need to go crazy with the size. Let's just maybe leave it at 18. I think that should be enough. Okay, and let's right click and convert it to editable poly. Alright, and we'll just fix the length. So let's go to vertex, grab the verts on the uh, right side, and just drag them down to the uh, end. Alright, same with this side. Just to get our length. Okay, and I think I'm just going to hide everything else for now. Alright, so let's exit to vertex for a second. Just select our launcher. Okay, and just right click, high selection. Okay, just because it's going to lag a bit, I think, if we have that in there. Okay, so we'll zoom in here. Alright, and uh, I'm just going to hit uh, Alt X for a sec. Alright, and as you can see, uh, you know, you can't really see through here too good. Um, you can always go up to the uh, viewport name and right click and go down to transparency, and you can turn it on best. Right, which will improve the uh, quality of it a bit. As you can see, it doesn't really do much for me though, because the uh, video card isn't you know, the best. All right, so I'm just going to leave it uh, solid again and just use the uh, bottoms here where I can see this stuff to judge where that stuff goes. Okay, so let's go into Edge. All right, and we'll add a couple of loops around here. So let's do a connect. All right, I'm just going to do one and slide it over to the left. All right, just stop where this starts to stick out. Maybe 76 negative. Okay, and then let's do two more here. All right, we'll do two segments. I'm just going to do no pinch, no slide, and hit OK. And then go to Vertex and just grab these guys manually and move them over. Okay, I'm going to center it on where that little bulge is there. All right, for both of them, just like that. Okay, and we also have one up here at the end. Just going to see if I can uh, get a better look at it. All right, let's try this one. Okay, and on this one you can see it actually has a screw and a washer. Okay, so we're going to have to add that after, but I think I'm just going to make this out of this, the body of this. I don't think we need to actually put a, a separate band around it. Okay, so let's go back to Edge, and we'll just add another loop through here. Alright, so connect one segment, no pinch, no slide, and we'll just drag it over to the center of that piece. Okay, and then let, let's uh, select an edge on each of these three loops, do a loop, and we'll just chamfer all three of them at once. All right, so we'll open up chamfer and just raise it up a bit to get some uh, width. Right, maybe, let's say, two and a half around should be good, and hit OK. All right, and then we'll just pull them all out at the same time. So let's go to Polygon, and make sure you don't have back facing turned on, and we'll just select all the polys along here. All right, all those guys, and we'll do an extrude. All right, want to be on local normal here, and take the height down doesn't probably have to be a lot. Let's do maybe two and hit OK. Let's check it out in perspective and see if that's going to be right. Just hit Z. Okay, so that's probably OK. Uh, it will smooth it over a bit when we add the turbo smooth. So, yeah, we'll just do two on the extrusion height and we can exit polygon. All right, so let's just add a turbo smooth right now. All right, so back into the modify list, down to turbo smooth. Okay, and again, we'll use two iterations and tick on ice line display. All right, so it's probably it's uh, obviously way too blobby. So let's go back and add some support. All right, so I'm just gonna go to Edge. 
Okay, and we'll just start on the end here, grab all these uh, edges, do a connect, okay, and we'll do two, and just pinch them apart. Right for this one I might do maybe 85 on the pinch, and hit OK. Alright, and let's go back to the left view, it's probably easier to select. Alright, and then we'll do all these guys at the same time, so let's just grab all the edges in between those pieces, holding control, and we'll do a connect. Alright, and again I'm going to do uh, two segments, I'm just going to lower the pinch down, because we do want these to be fairly rounded over. Alright, so let's do maybe 50, and hit OK. Alright, just going to jump out into perspective. Alright, I don't think we need to do any around the sides of them, but we should do some between. So let's grab these guys here and these guys here and connect. Alright, and let's just up the pinch. Alright, maybe we'll do 85 and OK. Alright, we're going to need one to hold this side, so let's grab these guys and we'll do another two. Alright, connect. And just raise the pinch up a bit. Alright, let's do maybe 96, and OK. And we might want to add a couple across the center here, just to help it when it's smooth, because it's pretty far between the two edge loops. OK, so we'll grab those guys, do another connect, and I'll just do two and just zero the uh, pinch and slide out. Like that. OK, and then we'll need another one down at the end here, so let's grab this guy, ring, connect, and we'll do two again and just pinch them apart. OK, maybe 50 this time, and OK. Alright, you can always check as you're going along by hitting the show and result button up here. Alright, turn off our edges, turn off that edge there, and just take a look. Alright, so it's probably okay. I'm just going to look at the end here, you can see it looks a little weird, so I think we should probably inset that polygon so we have another loop on the end. Okay, so let's turn off show and result, hit F4, go to polygon, grab the end one, do an inset. Alright, I'll just leave it at one, and okay. And that should hold fine. Let's exit polygon and turn on show and result. And F4. Alright, so it fixed it. Okay, so that's probably cool for the uh, motor piece. Let's center the pivot on it. Alright, so hierarchy tab again. Effect pivot only, center object, and turn it off. And let's name this. I'm just going to call it uh, rocket motor or something. Alright, just like that. And we should probably do a save now that we have it completed. Alright, I think I'm just going to chuck my gray shader on there. Alright, and we don't really need these stats anymore, so let's just right click up here and turn it off. Okay. Alright, so let's take another look at the reference. Alright, so I think we'll do the washer first, and then we'll just uh, steal a screw off the launcher and use it here. Alright, so let's go into the uh, top view. Okay, and we'll zoom in. And we might have to make this a little wider, I'm not sure. Let's just uh, create the uh, washer. All right, and for that, we can just use a tube. Okay, so let's grab one and just drag one out here. All right, I might leave it sticking over the edges just a bit. All right, I'll give it a tiny bit of height. Okay, and let's actually move it down so we can see it. Right, sitting up here. And pull it down to the surface there, hit Z. So let's uh, go into the Modify panel. Alright, so for the first radius, let's just do maybe 1.4, and for radius 2, let's just do 3 to make it easy. Alright, the height, let's just do 0.4. I think that's pretty close. Okay, and I'll just leave it on 30 sides, I think. Okay, and let's convert it to Edible Poly. Alright, we'll go to Edge, and we'll just do all the outer edges at the same time. So let's uh, go into Wireframe, F3. I'm just going to grab the two inside ones and the two outside ones, holding control. Okay, and we'll do a loop. Alright, I can change the color here. Can't really see what we're doing. Alright, so those edges selected, and we'll chamfer. Alright, let's do maybe uh, 0 0.07, and okay. Alright, so pretty simple washer, but it, you know it's really tiny, so we don't need to spend too much time on it. Alright, so let's just select our motor. I'm just going to copy the name out. Control C, and select the washer, and just paste it in there. Control V, and I'll just add washer to the end of the name. 
Alright, so we're going to need a screw, so I'm just going to uh, right click and go unhide by name. Okay, and on our reference picture it was a slotted screw, so I'm just going to steal one off of maybe the uh, heat shield band. Alright, that was slotted, so I'll just unhide that. Alright, just find it here. Alright, so it's up here. Okay, so we'll select that, and I'm just going to shift drag a copy down on the Z, holding shift. Okay, and we'll do copy, and I'll just change the name here. Right, just call it a uh, rocket motor screw or something. Okay, get rid of the O1, hit OK. Alright, and we just want to hide this so we don't accidentally move it, so hide selection. Alright, so let's yank this down into place. Alright, and let's go into the front view. Alright, so we don't need the shaft, so let's just delete it. Alright, I'm going to drop down into edit poly, go to polygon, and again, make sure you don't have back facing turned on, and we'll just select the entire uh, shaft. Alright, don't need these little tiny guys up here either. Okay, so the whole thing, and just hit delete, get rid of it. Alright, and we can exit polygon, and we can center the pivot now, so hire tab, effect pivot only, center an object. Alright, and let's rotate it. So I'm going to turn on rotate, and turn on my angle snaps, and just give it a 90 degree spin. Okay, and we'll just move it over and stick it on top of our washer. Okay, just like that. And let's check it out in the uh, top view. Alright, just align it to the center. Alright, just like that. Alright, so that should be uh, cool for this piece, I think. Alright, so let's just uh, throw the gray on that. Alright, so that should take care of the motor, at least. Okay, so let's do another save. Now that it's finished. Alright, so let's jump back out to the left view. Okay, I think we can start probably building the warhead now. Alright, so let's go into the front, and we'll just use... Uh, another cylinder to start. Okay, so let's go back to the crate panel, grab a cylinder. Alright, I'm just going to drag one out here. I'm right, not sure how big it'll need to be, so we'll just get one in, give it some height. Alright, jump into perspective. Alright, let's make sure it's centered on this, so I'm just going to use the align tool again. Alright, click on the motor, and hit OK. And we'll move it up to the end. Alright, and let's look in the left view. Alright, so I'm going to go into the Modify panel, change my color first. Okay, so let's uh, take the radius down a little bit. Right, and again, we're going to be off the picture here, but uh, that's okay. We'll just use one side of it to kind of judge the angle we need. Alright, so let's do maybe, uh, maybe 13 on the radius to start. Uh, the height doesn't matter one height segment and I think I'll put the sides up a little bit let's do maybe, I don't know, 24 uh, we will turbo smooth this too, so we don't need to go nuts alright, so that might be cool to start, alright, so let's uh, convert it to edible poly alright, just gonna go to vertex again and just uh, push these guys back so they touch our motor alright, and we'll worry about the uh, fins after I'm just gonna uh, worry about the actual warhead piece first, okay, so let's just drag these over here Okay, and uh, let's go to Polygon. Alright, I'm just going to select the end polygon there. Okay, so let's do a bevel. Alright, and we'll go way up on the height. I'm just going to take it up to like, uh, let's say, 90 or so. And up the outline amount. Alright, let's say uh, 90 on the height. And we'll do... Uh, 15 on the outer outline amount. Okay, and again, we're going to be way off here, but that's okay. We'll just, uh, you know, kind of wing it. Alright, we'll say okay. And then let's take a look at our reference. Might be a good idea. Okay, so let's do an extrude. Alright, let's go up a bit. Let's say 16 and okay, and let's do another bevel. Alright, and we'll just lower the uh, outline amount way down. Let's take it down to maybe negative 20 and back the height off a little bit. All right, we'll do, say, 78 on the height and hit OK. 
Alright, and we need another extrude. Alright, 16 looks like it might be close, so we'll just say okay. Alright, and let's inset this end polygon. Just gonna take a look at the reference one more time. Right, there's a little edge there. Okay, so let's go up a little bit. Let's do 1.5. And okay. And then back to the left view. And we'll just do another extrude. And it might back that off a little bit. Right, let's do 12. And okay. Alright, so pretty simple. Okay. Alright, let's take another look. Okay, so we're going to have to add some little uh, inset pieces here. Alright, we're going to have to extrude the center, I think, as well. And I think I might do the, f the uh, little fins out of a separate piece, and we'll just break it at this seam right here. Okay, so let's go down to the end here. Two polygon. And I'm just going to drag through and grab all these guys on the end. Okay, and we'll just detach those. Alright, we'll just say okay. Alright, we'll work on this in two pieces. Okay, so with the end uh, warhead piece selected, let's exit polygon and just go and put a turbo smooth on it. Alright, turbo smooth, and we'll do two again. Ice line display. Alright, and let's drop back to edit poly. Alright, so let's uh, grab these center ones. Do this in the left view. Okay, so we'll go to polygon, grab all these guys in the center, and we'll just do an extrude. Alright, again, we'll do local normal, and I'll just take the height down a bit. Alright, let's do one and a half or so on this guy. And okay. Alright, check it out in perspective. Alright, that's probably fine. Okay, so let's add some support to it. Alright, so we'll go back to edge and just grab one of these edges on the center. Do another ring and another connect. Alright, two segments, and we'll just pinch them apart. Alright, let's do maybe 80, and OK. Alright, then we'll add one on this side. Ring, connect. Just going to do one, I think, here to start. Alright, and we'll slide it back. Alright, maybe negative 97 on the slide, and OK. And then let's do one on this side as well. Grab these guys, connect, and I'm just going to move it up to the other end. Alright, I think I'll do 97 again, and OK. Alright, just like that, let's see how it looks. Just going to hit show and result. OK, turn off our edges. Alright, so that's not too bad. OK, let's start working on the end up here. Alright, so we'll turn that off, and let's go into the end here. Alright, so I think I'll add one on this side first. Alright, so we'll do a ring and a connect. Alright, maybe uh, I'll leave it at 97 on the slide and hit OK. Alright, let's add a couple across this piece. Alright, we'll do two. No slide, and let's just take a look here. Alright, it's not totally hard. Alright, so let's just go up a bit. Maybe 70, and OK. Alright, again, you can always check by hitting show and result. Alright, let's do a couple around the end piece. Alright, might go up a little bit on this. Alright, let's... Alright, that looks pretty good, so we'll do 75, and OK. And I think, again, I'm going to inset this polygon on the very end. OK, so let's grab it and do an inset. Alright, I'm just going to see if it's actually flat on the end. It looks like it is. OK, so let's just do maybe one on the inside amount and OK. Alright, check it out with show and result. Alright, that's not looking too bad. OK, so we'll start adding the little um, inset pieces, these guys here. Alright, but before we do that, let's do a save. OK, let's turn our edges back on, F4. Okay, and I'm just going to turn off show and result. Okay, so we'll add those little uh, recessed pieces. Okay, so let's go to edge first. I'm just going to do another couple loops around here, I think. Alright, so we'll grab all these guys, do a connect. Alright, 
I might actually just do it like that. So we'll do 75 on the pinch, no slide, and OK. All right, and let's go to polygon. OK, so I think what we'll do here is I'm just going to turn on ignore back facing. And I'm just going to grab maybe two at a time. OK, so we'll do two on the top and then skip two, do two more, skip two. Just like that, so those 12. Okay, and I think we can probably just get away with maybe um, just extruding these in slightly, okay? We want this to be fairly subtle, so let's just take it down to maybe, I don't know, negative 0.5 or something. All right, so just a tiny little bit, and we'll hit okay. All right, and let's uh, turn off polygon and hit show and result. All right, turn off our edges at four. And that's not exact to the reference, but uh, it's close. I'm right, just thinking that might actually be okay. Uh, I'm just going to throw the gray on there and see how it looks. All right, I want it to be fairly subtle. All right, so that's not too bad, actually. I think I'll just leave it like that. Okay, so let's take another look here. All right, so there's really no detail on this piece here. Um, Okay, so I think we'll move down and start working on the end down there. Okay. All right, just going to name this. I'm just going to call it uh, Rocket Warhead. Okay, and center the pivot point. All right, hierarchy tab again, fact pivot only, center an object, and then turn it off. Okay, and let's just move down and we'll start working on the uh, actual fin pieces. All right, let's do another save, though, now that we have the warhead part done.